Hi, I'm Rob Bhatti, oboist in the New York Philharmonic, and this is what's in my case. This is a Yamaha, and the, the model number, or the, the model name, is a Yamaha Duet. I like it very much. It's a very free-blowing instrument, and for me, it's particularly well-suited because um, of the low register. The low register is very free and easy, and for me as a second oboe player, that is incredibly important. Uh, another aspect of this that I like is that all of the duets have plastic sleeves in the top joint. This is wonderful because it helps prevent cracking. And in the two duets that I've had in the past eight years, neither one of them has cracked. A real plus. Most cases that I've seen protect the oboe reasonably well. Uh, there are some that are lighter than this case and some that are stronger. But for me, it suits my needs just fine. And one of the nicest things about the oboe in general is that I can pack it up and put it in my backpack. And there it goes with my reed tool kit and my music, my lunch, whatever I happen to have. And this goes everywhere with me. It goes on the train, it goes on the planes, it goes on tour. And it's safe inside right here. Here's the oval in the case. Also in there, I keep a small bit of cork grease, a damp sponge to help keep the wood of the oval hydrated and hopefully help prevent cracking, and a small screwdriver because one never knows when the oval may go out of adjustment. I tell all my students to keep one close at hand. In the top pocket, First and foremost is my reed case. I like this one. It holds 12 reeds very securely, and it's very compact, fits easily in this top pocket. Also in here is cigarette paper, because one never knows when we'll get water in the keys, and this is essential in keeping that, the keys clean. And a tuner. As oboists, we are asked to give the A to tune the orchestra, and this makes sure that we're on pitch. I like this model particularly because it's got a built-in metronome as well, and that's great for practice. What I use to clean my instruments, or to swab them out, I'm a little bit old-fashioned in that I still use a feather, the old-fashioned way. I have a swab, and from time to time I have used them. The problem with using a swab with this particular instrument is that the weight for most swabs that I've tried doesn't fit through the reed well in the instrument. Another thing I keep with me at all times is my reed tool kit. And in that kit, I have a knife or two or three, as the case may be, uh, a chopping block to clip reeds with, and a little case where I keep some razor blades and a plaque. Let's go downstairs and I can show you my reed table where I actually make the reeds. Of course, I start with two kings, just like this, and split it, cut it, until it comes to something like this. This is ready for a gouging machine, and I use one of these two right here at different times of the year. They're both very good. After it comes off the gouging machine, I use my dial indicator to measure it to make sure it's even up and down the cane, very important. After which, I fold it and put it on my shaper tip. It comes off the shaper tip like this, the right shape for a reed, and this in turn gets tied onto a staple and ready to be scraped. There are some alternatives, uh, rather than having a full professional model such as this. Uh, all the makers make some good student models, and I've tried some good ones. There are ways in which you can save a little bit of money, 
And some of those models may not have every key. And one in which I don't find particularly useful is this third octave key. Um, I never use it. So if, it, if, that, if you're looking at an instrument that doesn't have one, I wouldn't worry about that. But one key that I would be mindful of is this key right here, the side, the left hand F key. Some student models don't carry that. And that is one I, I wouldn't want to see a student do without because that's essential in developing your technique. Another one that might be optional is this little banana key down here. It is important as you get older and become more advanced for a trill between C and C sharp, but it's not essential right away. One of the most important aspects of playing the oboe, I think, is the way in which we produce our wind. I'm always mindful to be thinking about how I'm producing my wind, and if I'm doing so in a very free, easy, effortless way, without any tension in my neck, or my mouth, or my chest. I usually start with a long tone, just try to move my wind through the instrument very easily and effortlessly and have a little blossom, a little crescendo to it, maybe with a little vibrato, and make sure that everything feels relaxed and easy, that my wind is flowing through the instrument effortlessly. After I'm done with that, I might try to connect a few notes. Repeat that a few times. Again, I'm always thinking about just having my wind be relaxed and the flow from one note to the next be effortless. Playing the oboe, we all need to learn any number of different pieces. Mozart Concerto, Strauss Concerto, Vaughan Williams, Mozart Quartet. Uh, they're all great pieces and important for us, but I always stress with my students and encourage them to find music also that they really want to play, that music that has a real resonance for them. Uh, this, uh, I think, is really important because when someone connects with a piece, they're going to bring more to it. They're going to, it's going to channel more of an inner voice and they'll nurture more of that voice working on that piece and they'll have more to bring to it. So I think this is critical and I, I encourage all my students to really look at things that, that, really, uh, that really make them smile. I'm Rob Botti of the New York Philharmonic, and this was What's In My Case. Thanks for joining me.